Hi, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about chromium. Chromium is a trace mineral. That means we need chromium in very, very small quantities in the human body, but that doesn't make it less important. You see, most diseases today are caused and most ailments and aches and pains and degeneration of muscles and brain and kidneys and liver is also mainly caused because of the deficiency of one or more vitamins or minerals. We need to understand you have trillions of cells in the human body. They are powered by the raw material from the food that you give it. That's why we need vitamins. That's why we need minerals from the food that we eat. If vitamins and minerals were not important for us, okay, it wouldn't be spoken about so much, but we need it to control every function in the human body. And there's a huge connection between chromium and diabetes. While there's a large population out there who believes that type 2 diabetes is something that you've got to live with for the rest of your life, there's another whole population that is constantly reversing their type 2 diabetes in the safe way. They're on medication, they start to make lifestyle changes, their doctors wean them off their medication, they're and they're completely diabetic free, type two. What, we're un what we wanna talk about today is chromium and what is its role in diabetes. Chromium is a trace mineral. It is responsible for the metabolism of fat and carbohydrates, yes. The problem is never really carbohydrates. It's the quality of carbohydrates, the quantity you eat, and if you don't have the right minerals and vitamins that help you convert carbohydrates into energy, you have a big problem of a spike of your blood glucose levels. So you see, it goes much deeper than just eliminating carbs or giving carbs a bad name and all of that stuff, which is why when diabetics go low on carbs, automatically their sugar levels start to improve <clears throat> because the spikes in their blood sugar levels are much lesser. But if you have the right amount of chromium, and we've spoken about B vitamins as well, if you lack in B vitamins, you don't even have the basic ingredients to help you convert carbohydrates into energy. So that's a big problem. Now, like I said, chromium helps you with the metabolism of carbohydrates and fats. It also works with insulin. Chromium and insulin work together to metabolize sugar. So if you can't break down sugar the right way, you have an immediate spike in your pancreas up to generate more and more insulin to clean up the mess. And that's how we become deficient in insulin. And then after a while, type two diabetics are now, they move from a tablet to the requirement of insulin. That shows you how badly managed diabetes is. So it's very important for us to understand that we need chromium to manage these levels. It's very, very, sorry, give me a moment. It's very important for us to understand that we need chromium for that. Chromium also, impacts the effectiveness of insulin. You know, a lot of people are, say that I'm insulin insensitive, it's insensitive, okay? I have an insulin insensitivity problem. What does this mean? That insulin and your cells don't talk. Now, if there's glucose in my blood, insulin knocks at the doors of your cells. The cells open and the glucose is moved into your cells and your blood sugar levels drop. Now, chromium increases the effectiveness of insulin which means it makes insulin do its job of transporting glucose from your blood into your cells so that your blood sugar levels come down. That's how it works. So you see, diabetes is not just about popping a tablet and expecting your levels to get better. Of course, the tablet will treat your symptom and bring down your blood sugar levels, but after a while, if you don't take care of the root cause through your diet, your exercise, your sleep, your emotional wellness, your stress, it's only gonna get worse and worse and your dosages are gonna go higher and higher. And then you are gonna suffer from the side effects of those medications eventually. So understand that is why nutrition is important. You need chromium to facilitate and make insulin better. The quick fix is, hey, yeah, take some more insulin injections. Yeah, take some more diabetic drugs. I'm not against it. I'm against the fact that we only rely on insulin and diabetic drugs to treat us. And that's dangerous for you. Chromium also helps us carry protein from the food that we eat to muscles. So now what happens if we're deficient in chromium? We have, we have a problem that can lead us to diabetes, we have glucose insensitivity, we have malnutrition, we don't absorb because we cannot break down carbohydrates and fat the right way, it impairs absorption and now a lot of us think we're eating well, but we have malabsorption issues, we are malnourished. We are low on our vitamin count. There are so many healthy people who go to check their vitamins and they realize that their vitamins are so low and they say, but I eat healthy all the time. It's not about what you eat. It's about how your body breaks down and absorbs what you eat. 
Today, chromium is scientifically being studied and used in the treatment of high blood pressure. Yes, chromium can reduce your high blood pressure as well and even prevent it. It's used in bringing down high triglyceride levels and improving your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, making your overall lipid profile look good. Now, be very careful. Because it's good for diabetes and high blood pressure, a lot of people immediately start Googling the best chromium supplements. And they start taking supplements, okay, without supervision. If you take an overdose of chromium, you can get dermatitis problems, you can get eczema, and even cases of lung cancer. So anything in excess is bad for you. I'm here to tell you that in most cases, you don't need a chromium supplement, but if you change your diet, you're gonna get chromium from most of the most common foods if you're eating a balanced diet. Let's start with that, the millet family. Finger millet, pearl millet, whether you're eating your ragi, your nachni, your jowar, millets are very rich in chromium. And like I said, you need chromium in small amounts. Bengal gram is very, very rich in chromium. All of your lentils, all of your dals and lentils, all of your legumes, your rajmas, your chanas, your split beans, all of these are rich in chromium. So if you're eating a balanced diet, you're getting this every day in small quantities and mostly you will never be deficient in it. You find it in carrots, you find it in beetroots, you find it in moringa. Moringa are uh, moringa leaves, the drumstick tree, you know, the drumsticks that are long vegetables that you use in sambars and South Indian uh, cooking. The leaves of that plant, also known as moringa, are super powerful in chromium and that's why moringa is also used in the treatment of diabetes. You find them in almonds, cashew nuts, walnuts, mustard seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, all of these are things that you should be having every single day to make up a balanced diet, even in ground nuts. When it comes to fruits, you find it in pomegranate, jackfruit, pineapple, mangoes. Yes, mangoes contain chromium, which is why we always say mangoes are not bad for diabetics unless you have managed your sugar levels really, really bad. Mangoes contain compounds and enzymes that can actually help you to lower blood sugar blood sugar levels. But if you're eating it the wrong way, you have a big problem. Today, all of our diabetics, mostly all of them, eat a mango every single day and their blood sugar levels are absolutely fine because it's food synergy. It's how you match different foods and pair it with your lifestyle. And you find it in all cruciferous vegetables as well, your broccolis, your kales, your cabbage, and your cauliflower. So something as simple as chromium can help you to recover from your type two diabetes way better than someone who is not eating for their disease. Most of us are medicating for our disease, but we're not eating for our disease or we're not living for our disease. We're not working out, we're not sleeping on time, we're taking too much of stress. All of this makes the disease almost impossible to recover. And then our medications have to go higher and higher. When you're on medication, the common logic is, over time, you should be getting better and better. And your medication should be getting lesser and lesser. But if your medication is only increasing, it only means one thing. You're not getting better, you're getting sicker. So you may want to explode this. Green coffee bean, a lot of people drink green coffee. Green coffee is also good. It contains chlorogenic acid, which is known and scientifically proven to drop your blood sugar levels. Now remember, if you do green coffee bean, if you have a habit of moving into hypo, where your blood sugar levels fall really, really quickly, you want to make sure that you go easy. Or if you're having green coffee, make sure that you don't go into a slump right away because it is powerful for reducing your blood sugar levels. This is the simplicity of nature. This is the simplicity of knowledge. When we take right knowledge and we put right action behind it, we get the results. If we're constantly jumping from one opinion from to another looking for the next quick fix, that's the reason why most people are stuck in chronic sickness. That's why most people never recover from their type 2 diabetes. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.